Hey everybody, let's laugh at these sissy soy boy woke snowflake beta libtards. That was the general sentiment of what everyone on the subreddit r slash libs of social media was saying back in the early 2020s after people began to notice that this subreddit was gaining in popularity. There's a fair chance that you might have heard of this subreddit. Formed in mid-2021, during its short lifespan, it was able to rack up tens of thousands of members, reaching around 40,000 in August 2023. This subreddit was in the same vein as libs of TikTok, but r slash libs of social media was dedicated to sharing the insane social media posts made by people described as liberal. So a lot of the content was focused on the increase in crime within areas that have high minority demographics, stuff about the trans debates and them forcing their ideologies on children children, drag performers at kids parties, anything Biden related, anything about microaggressions or fat shaming or cancellations, and so on and so forth. It almost seemed reminiscent of 2016 in that they would post these videos of obese feminists with LGBT flags in the background who were raging over one thing or another, and then using them as fodder to roast and reaffirm their own self-beliefs. The thing is that both people on the right and left have been guilty in the past of frequently using straw man arguments. They single out the most extreme or delusional members of the opposing viewpoint and make it out to seem that the rest of them are all like that. It's very easy to gawk at these people making absurd videos and asserting extreme claims, but this is also entrenching people within their own echo chambers. It's using cherry picked examples. Regardless, this wouldn't last for long. I couldn't tell you if their banning was due to the general content that was posted, or if there was a particular post that was approved by the mods that gave Reddit the jurisdiction to send this community into oblivion. Whatever the case was, they had apparently promoted hate and were subsequently banned by Reddit. A lot of people weren't happy with this though. The news eventually travelled to r slash look at my halo, which is another seemingly conservative leaning sub that calls people out for virtue signalling and trying to paint themselves out to be progressive and self-righteous. The post received 1.4 thousand upvotes and the comments were filled with people complaining to say that it was unfair that they allow other subreddits such as r slash white people twitter to stay up, which is just as egregious but goes the other way, calling it a double standard. Some people even asserted that this was some sort of a conspiracy because of the US election that's coming up towards the end of 2024. People were making the claim that Reddit wanted to try and censor those on the right so that people couldn't see the logic of many of the most passionate members of the left. Nonetheless, these cries would fall on deaf ears because Reddit's decision was final. Libs of social media was not coming back. But I'll tell you something that I'm sure you'll come back to if you give it the chance, and that is Cook Unity. You see, Cook Unity is the very first chef to consumer platform delivering freshly prepared pre selected meals right to your door on a weekly basis. If you're like me, you might not have enough time on your hands to cook a delicious and satisfying meal every day, so Cook Unity takes all of the hassle out for you. It has a total of 7 dietary preferences ranging all the way from gluten free to vegan and is super flexible. You can pause it, skip weeks and even cancel anytime you want. Again, Cook Unity makes dinner time a custom and simple task. These meals are created by local chefs within micro kitchens so you can be sure that as well as convenient, this is tasty, fresh food. All you need to do is heat it up. And that's something that I really like about it. These are professional chefs feeding you dinner right to your doorstep. So if that sounds like a tasty prospect to you, then I recommend going to cookunity.com forward slash foxakimbo50 or head down into the description and use my code foxakimbo50 for 50% off your first meals. I want to give a big thank you to Cook Unity for being the sponsor of today's video. So moving on, while we're on the topic of food being consumed, there is only one possible way that we could move this video forward. These guys up next really don't need a food delivery service. This is r slash cannibalism advocates. That's right, this was a subreddit that began in late 2021, which seemingly advocated for cannibalism. Its description read, we are people that support eating human meat on the basis of environmentalism. Cannibalism is a new ethical approach to solving climate change. For fetishistic stuff, go to r slash cannibalism fetish. And yes, cannibalism fetishes are apparently a thing. 
And is it sad to say that I'm not even surprised at this point? However, as the description makes abundantly clear, this is supposedly not a fetish subreddit. It was more for the green movement, I guess. People add carbon footprints to the earth, as do their livestock, the best way to combat that. I guess we'll eat anyone who's willing to become someone else's dinner. You might be wondering, who in their right mind would willingly want to be eaten? I would say nobody in their right mind, but there were a few people within this subreddit that were talking about how they would be a good option to be someone's food. People were posting their age, gender, height and weights, as well as build. Some were also posting about the types of people that they would like to eat, but whether or not they actually have eaten anyone before, I couldn't possibly say for sure. Let me tell you right now, do not look this up, it has not been unbanned ever since, and we'll get into why it was banned in just a moment, but this was one of the most reprehensible subreddits I have ever seen. Despite the fact that it wasn't expressly a fetish subreddit, you could tell that a lot of people in it had a cannibalism fetish, and some of them even admitted to it, saying that they found this subreddit because of their king. I have to imagine that there were more people in this community for reasons of sexual gratification rather than being militant tree huggers. Now, you might be thinking, is this some sort of a role play? Is this satire? Because this seems so extreme. Surely this is fake. To which I say to you, no, it's not. Through this subreddit, I was able to find a YouTube channel of a young girl who was talking about how she was an endo cannibal, which I believe is like when you eat your loved ones after they die, and she said it might have been like a sexual thing, so she didn't want to eat her family, but she was saying that when her partner in the future passes away, she wants to eat him. And let me tell you, this video sounded very sincere. With that said, a little under half a year ago now, r slash cannibalism advocates was banned for posting violent content. The subreddit had a rule against posting any images, however, this doesn't negate the fact that people within the community were openly celebrating people dying so that they could be eaten, or saying that they wanted to be eaten themselves, or their friends and families. And so, as of posting this video, cannibalism advocates is still banned, and I think it's fair to say that it's unlikely to return anytime soon. And the same thing might be said about the next subreddit that we're set to talk about. This sub committed one of the biggest blunders that I have ever seen on Reddit that completely derailed the initial message that it was trying to get across. This blunder would lead to its eventual demise. This is r slash anime hate. So r slash anime hate was a subreddit that was formed in 2013, and as the name suggests, it was initially a place where anime haters could go and talk about their disdain for the art form. This community was banned a little over three months ago now. I'm sure you're interested in hearing the reason why, and I can't even lie, it's a bit of a funny one. So the people within this subreddit really seem to hate anime and everything that goes along with it. Weebs are their sworn enemies naturally, so r slash anime hate will cherry pick all of the worst things to do with weeb culture. I'm sure that they would have loved my video on unhinged anime incidents. In that, I discuss how weebs don't exactly have a great reputation, and one of the biggest reasons why, amongst many others, is that some of them are into lollies. Now, if you don't know what a lolly is, consider yourself lucky, but I'm about to tell you, it's an anime character who has the physical form of a child, despite the fact that they claim to be older. So it would be like a vampire or a demigod who physically looks like 14, but because they're a vampire, obviously they're like 400. Therefore, some weirdos think that it's okay to like have an attraction to them because they're technically, you know, 400 years old, even though they physically look like a fetus. Now, r slash anime hates obviously had a big problem with that. Even a lot of anime fans will denounce and disassociate themselves with people who enjoy lollies, but critical outsiders often lump in casual fans and lolly enjoyers. r slash anime hates, however, made the massive mistake of allowing people to upload pictures of lolly so that other members of the community could scoff at it. Yeah, apparently this actually happened. The legend goes that mods allowed people to upload lolly pictures, and of course people would be denouncing it and saying that anime as well as its fans suck, but on Reddit, this is so obviously not allowed. This apparently became very common within the community, and so because they had lolly up on the subreddit, this violated Reddit's policies, and r slash anime hate was given the boot. This is yet another subreddit that still hasn't been unbanned, and a lot of people reacting to this were saying that it was unfair, as there were plenty of other subreddits that have had a history of posting this sort of stuff, but never got banned. 
Regardless, Reddit's decision was final, and r slash anime hate was permanently terminated. And I think that topic transitions us well into our next banned subreddits. This subject is one of the most infamous and notorious aspects of online culture of the past couple of years, so let's talk about r slash EDP 445. So if you somehow don't know who EDP445 is, he was a YouTuber with more than 2 million subscribers that was caught up in a predator sting a few years ago after he agreed to meet up with a girl that he thought was underage. He was confronted at the place that he agreed to meet her, and then claimed that he was only going to pick up some cupcakes. This has since been dubbed the Cupcake Incident. Since then, the now infamous creator has tried to come back on several different platforms. He since claimed that the allegations were all false, that he was somehow tricked by someone that he thought was a casting director, he tried to change his name, he's tried just about every trick in the book, and probably a few more. But since this news became public, his channel was deleted and his name has been put through the mud. Every time he tries something new to attempt to make a comeback, he just gets instantly reported and then banned. And you could say that his subreddit was a similar deal. People, for the most part, are using it these days to give updates on EDP. So if there's a sighting out in public, people will post it. People have seen him in his car at drive throughs and shopping for groceries and Walmart and the likes. People within this community will also post when they get another one of his accounts terminated, or when he's made some sort of social media post, or tries yet another harebrained scheme to prove his innocence. Whatever the case, if there's ever an EDP update, you can be sure that it will be posted right there. Now, when you first hear that EDP had a subreddit, and the subreddit was eventually banned, you're probably thinking that this was some sort of a community where people were actually trying to defend him, they might have been his last bastion of defense, and they were trying to scour the internet to try and find ways to get him off the hook. But actually, no. They clown on him too. <laughs> have a good night, y'all. F*** this. I'm gone. I'm, I'm done. I'm f***ing done, dude. Like a... It begs the question, though, if these people aren't defending EDP, for what reason was this community banned? Unfortunately, it's a bit of an anticlimactic reason, because a few months ago it was discovered that this community was unmoderated, which seems to be the main reason why most subreddits are getting banned these days. Due to this, Reddit ruled that EDP's subreddit had to get kicked off. People were upset with this ruling, however, because they wanted a place for EDP to be shamed and ridiculed. And the thing is with unmoderation bans is that they're a little bit easier to overturn than other ones. And so, shortly after the EDP subreddit was terminated, they got a new mod in, and so this was one community that has actually since been unbanned. And today, if you want to catch up on the latest EDP news, find out where he's been cited most recently, see which accounts of his have been the latest to be terminated, with r slash EDP 445, you can do so. And from one creator's subreddit getting banned to another, this next story has controversy and conspiracy in spades, so let's talk about it. So, What If Altist is a YouTube channel run by Runyard Lynch with just shy of 600,000 subscribers. As his name might suggest, he creates videos about alternate history, the big what ifs of the past that would change how we live today and where we're going in the future. Speaking of which, he also makes a lot of videos predicting world affairs in the near future. So if you take a look at his most popular videos, a few of them are based on what could have happened and a few of them are guessing what will happen. For a channel like this, it only made sense for him to create a subreddit so that his viewers could go on there and discuss his videos and share opinions. However, with that, apparently came a lot of people who were sharing what's been described as hate speech and bigotry. Let me clarify that upon looking on the Wayback Machine, I couldn't find a post that I would deem to be excessively hateful or bigoted. This isn't to say that this didn't exist, but at least in my research for this video, there had been a handful of screenshots saved on the Wayback Machine, and none of them to me seemed to jump out as being excessively spiteful or vindictive. According to a few videos made on him, he frequently brings up his own politics, which is arguably a problem when you're talking about alternate history or speculating the future. Some other creators within his community have made videos calling him out. What a faultist has pretty mediocre production value at best and absolutely terrible history at the same time. What if Altist is not a historian? He is a pseudo-intellectual who harbors a deep hatred for the field of history, the academics who write it and practices that make up the historian's craft. The sheer volume of criticism this channel receives from sober historical commentators could occupy 
at least an hour. That said, because of his overt political stances, the story goes that he would have made some enemies along the way. It's only a natural thing that happens when you frequently bring up politics, and some people believe that it might have been his haters that actually got his subreddit taken off. Again, this subreddit may have had some hateful posts. I didn't see any of them, but some people say they did. I just can't attest to that. However, even if there were a few, based upon what I could see from the Wayback Machine, this seemed to be a very small minority of what was being posted. Most of the posts were debates, theories, and discussions about world politics, history, and war. And many of the people who found out the news were quick to express their disappointment that the sub was being taken down, arguing that this was all free speech. Additionally, there were several claims by people that most of the accounts that were posting things that led to the subreddit's termination were actually newly created. Apparently, most of them were about an hour old and seemed to be intentionally trying to get What If Alt Hist banned. And knowing what we know now, it appears as though they achieved their goal. That said, some people were saying that this community was a cesspit of racism and bigotry, so this appears to be a very divisive banning. To this very day, r slash what if altist is banned from reddit. This next one I have a bit to talk about. It involves a character that previously has perhaps been a bit overlooked, but currently is receiving her flowers. Set back by this recent banning, we'll have to wait and see what comes next, but unfortunately it is my displeasure to inform you that r slash sexy velma has been banned from reddit. Now, let me clear some things up right now, because you might automatically assume that this subreddit was banned because it is clearly sexually suggestive, and that, according to Google, Velma is 15 years old. I think that's referring to the original series because obviously it depends on the adaptation, sometimes she's a little bit older and sometimes a bit younger. Alas, my dear viewer, this is not the reason why it was banned. Now, Velma's a character that a lot of people, I think it's fair to say, have overlooked in the past. I mean, that was until Linda Cardinelli came down in that orange leather jumpsuit in Scooby-Doo 2 and awakened something in all of Gen Z boys. And so, over the past few years, the internet's been seeing more thirsty content for Velma, and there's a little conspiracy going on that this banning was made by Big Warner trying to keep the youth in line. It might surprise you to find out that r slash sexy Velma was actually banned for excessive copyright violations, which means that Warner, or at the very least a representative of theirs, definitely had a hand in this. Excessive copyright violations are a fastly growing reason why people and communities alike are getting banned. In April 2023, it was revealed that almost 6,000 people had been banned from Reddit the year prior because of excessive copyright violations. It's weird too, because there's actually quite a few Velma-related subreddits, and a good portion of them are also not safe for work. For example, r slash Velma not safe for work, and r slash Velma Dickly. However, it was only r slash sexy Velma that received the wrath of Reddit. People reacting to the news were saying that this must mean that the art posted within r slash sexy Velma was in fact canon, and of course there were 1984 claims and political conspiracies galore. Nevertheless, this is yet another subreddit that has remained banned ever since, and so if you're in the mood to get your jeepers jinkied, you're gonna have to look somewhere else, because this one has clearly been zoinked. And speaking of getting zoinked, I think it's appropriate to talk about a subreddit that Shaggy himself would have been disappointed to see go. This is r slash darknet markets. So if the name doesn't give away the identity of this subreddit, it was actually a place that people would go to in order to engage in the purchase of illegal substances and items, as well as engage in dark web related activities. A Vice article written about the sub after its termination wrote that, for years, r slash darknet markets was the place where drug dealers, hackers, and cyber criminals would hang out and talk about what happened on illicit marketplaces hosted on the dark web, such as Silk Road and Alpha Bay and a place for feds to lurk in the hope of catching some criminals. This was a subreddit like no other, because clearly within the description, people were told that they needed to be incredibly careful when buying or selling anything, because there was the expectation that there was a relatively possible chance that there was a copper on the other end. This was a very large subreddit too, with tens of thousands of people joining it. And a lot of the discussion in here was to do with drugs and where to get the good stuff on the dark web. 
One post I found was a guy asking if anyone had sniffed cocaine with their ass, so you know that this was truly a place for only the most heinous of criminals. Though, as you can imagine, this subreddit was on borrowed time. In 2015, Wire published an article saying that the feds had demanded Reddit to identify members of the sub, and by 2018, it was all over. This is the kind of place that just stinks of early internet, because these days, these sorts of forums just don't tend to exist in somewhere as popular as Reddit. This happened because Reddit had recently updated their terms of service so that people couldn't sell certain goods and services on the platform anymore. So things such as guns, drugs, personal information, sex and whatnot were now all off the table. And unfortunately for darknet markets, that was a lot of what was being sold there. Vice wrote that before it shut down, r slash darknet markets had almost 160,000 members. The subreddit had always been controversial, given that the users didn't exactly hide the fact that they were also users of illegal marketplaces that law enforcement had been shutting down left and right. It was also stated that other dark web related subreddits, such as r slash Xanax Cartel, r slash DNM Specialist, and r slash Hidden Service were also banned. So this wasn't Reddit exclusively targeting darknet markets. Six years on, and this community has never returned to Reddit, and in all likelihood, never will. But if you need a quick fix in the meantime, then why don't you check out my video on banned DoorDash drivers, because that's all we have time for today. It's yet another great video from my Book of the Band series. If you enjoyed this, then I'm sure you'll love that one too. Also, if you enjoyed it, then why not give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would truly appreciate it. Aside from that, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.